All right, everybody. Welcome to today's Creators Live. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Nailed it first try today. What's up, guys? Uh, so we'll give a little bit of time for folks to filter in. Uh, we got our regulars here, Ron and Michael and Yvonne. Uh, you guys know the drill. We got Tom in here. Tom is uh, someone who is new to the Omniprint team. So he's just gonna be sitting on the sidelines today, but you'll be seeing his name around a little bit more in the future. Um, let's see, we got Don, Joyce, and Valerie. We're gonna invite you to become panelists. Go ahead and accept that so you can turn on your cameras and have that face-to-face -face that we love. We talk about it every time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Michael, appreciate it. All right, so as you guys probably saw in the email, Today we're talking about the i2, but before we get into it, um, we got to go over some wins. Brian, we have, last week we acquired two or three new customers. Oh, awesome. Tell us more. Still not uh, advertising. Still not advertising, but getting more customers, so that word of mouth is really putting in the work for you. Yes, very much so. Awesome. So, so you got it by word of mouth. What kind of, um, what kind of customers are they? Are they uh, going to be kind of smaller volume, a uh, couple of shirts here, a couple of shirts there, or is it some businesses? Actually, um, so last week, our biggest client, he had sponsored a couple's request in the Dominican Republic. Okay. Her couple's retreat in mm -hmm. the Dominican Republic. And so um, apparently they wrote our name on the bathroom wall. And if you need shirts, call Michael and Yvonne. <laughs> no, they're just testing the waters to see if they like our product. And um, I expect that being their local, we'll get plenty of business from them. But once again, Cornerstone Construction has put our name out there. Right on. Very good. Good to hear it. Valerie, if I recall correctly, a couple of weeks ago, you were sharing with us that you had a pretty big order come in. How is that progressing? It is good. I um, got another order since then. Have another yeah. new customer. Uh, of course, that's embroidery, but it's business. Business so is business. Good. I'm excited about that. Um, have two other orders pending. Had a repeat customer. Um, she reached out to me to um, find out if I was still doing film. So yeah. So I was excited about that. And um, even in the midst of traveling and um, everything and trying to be on the right time zone. So I'm excited. Amazing. So you got more customers and a repeat customer. That's, that's great. That's I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for you. That's awesome. Let's, uh, let's go ahead. Let's direct our attention to the I2. So I thought it would be good to talk about um, one of maybe the less known or newer implemented features of the i2, which is the one pass DTF printing. So you can do DTF sheets on the i2 as well. Um, and the reason I wanted to talk about that is not only is it maybe lesser known that the i2 can do that, but some of you guys have the i2, some of you guys are looking at the i2, uh, and knowing all the things you can do with it, just like how we do all these different episodes on the free jet, we got to show the i2 some love too. The complication with doing uh, DTF normally on the i2 is the orientation of the print heads is wrong for doing DTF. Uh, because it does one pass printing on DTG, it does the white closely followed by the color. And so it does it all at once. Um, but because that's basically baked into the position of the print heads, it's not one print head, it's two, um, doing DTF where the color needs to come first was a little bit more complicated for us to implement uh, right out of the box. So what we have is 
we've programmed it to print back to front instead. Um, so I'm curious, Michael and Yvonne, since you guys have the i2, do you guys already have the feature to do the back to front DTF? Awesome. So this is going to be something new to show you guys. And then I'll have you guys shoot me an email afterwards, and I'll connect you with Juan to get this feature implemented for you. Um, so we've got a DTF sheet on here. Uh, already did the nozzle check. It's looking nice. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and run through uh, just the basic startup routine just so you guys know about it. Because if we just talk about printing DTF back to front, this is going to be a real short session. Uh, so you start by opening your clips, same thing as the FreeJet. Uh, that's going to be same smell, easy access. From there, you're going to come over into the i2 UI. You're going to do a cleaning. Uh, I'm sorry, you're going to do a circulation first. So there's a little toggle switch here for circulation. Let that run for about a minute. You'll do your two head cleanings and then you're going to do your nozzle check. So your nozzle check is going to be one of the files in the job settings folder. You're going to click it, do your margin. So we'll do just like a, a one inch margin. OK. Add it to the queue. And then we'll print it. All right. All right, so if we take a look, my cyan is a little bit spotty, but it should still be good for our purposes today. Um, and everything else is looking pretty. Oh, yeah, you guys can see that pretty good on the camera. Yeah, so there we have it. There's a couple of breaks in the, in the cyan, but everything else is looking nice. Um, so I'm just going to turn this sheet around. These are the large size sheets, so the maximum print area on the i2 is 16 by 20. So these are the 13 by 19 sheets. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I have a job pre-ripped um, in order to demonstrate this. And then we'll, while it's going, we're going to open up the RIP software and go a little bit more in depth about the different types of settings. Um, that you look at and really how simple it is to um, oh I was way off camera uh, and how simple it is to get it from point A to point B uh, a lot less settings that you mess around with compared to um, what you're used to on the free jet uh, Yvonne you had a question or, or comment pro tip so when um our trainer was here. Mm -hmm. He told us how important it is to check the head height. Head height mm -hmm. And you didn't do that. Uh, you're right. So before we started, I did print a nozzle check as well. And I did it at that point. Uh, I did neglect to do it just now. So that's a great point. Um, so one of the steps in that process, before you print the nozzle check in the uh, the UI software, which is basically uh, what you're used to as the, the driver. Um, under motions and sensors, there is the option in there. Hang on, I'm in the setting for the margins. And it's called auto scan. So we'll go ahead and do it here so you can see what it does. So it's going to scan the whole bed versus uh, on the free jet, it just scans that first couple of inches. And there we go. All right, 
So we'll go over into the print queue. We have this image set up with a two inch margin. Uh, not that it particularly matters now that I think about it since we're doing DTF. Uh, so I'm gonna set it to a one inch margin. Add it to the queue and send it on over. Um, so in, if uh, for Michael and Yvonne here, when you're in the UI, when you're in the job settings portion and you're doing the margins, there's a mode dropdown list and you need to select all DTF. And that'll tell it that all of the print heads need to print um, the color and then the white. And so it'll go backwards. So you'll see that here. We have the color layer going down and the white following, and as you can see, it's printing back to front this time. And for those of you who are in the, uh, in the Zoom call, but you are an attendee, we're gonna invite you to become a panelist so that you can get up on the main screen, you can turn on your camera, you can talk, um, and you can interact and make this more of an interactive session for you so you can get every little bit of value out of it that you can. Because uh, at the end of the day, I don't want to do this if it's not valuable for you. So if there's something additional that I can tell you, teach you, help you with, uh, show you, um, I definitely want to do that uh, so that it gives you the most value. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Darcy. You got your camera on and I appreciate it. Uh, all right, so we have our DTF print done. There we go. Boom. So we would go powder it. You guys know the drill when it comes to DTF, so I'm gonna set it to the side for now and handle that later. Um, who has questions? Any questions about the i2 in general? Thanks for turning on your camera, Tracy. Nice to see you. Um, any questions about the i2 in general? Anything about even one of our other products? Um, mainly, I wanted to show you guys the DTF function that we have for the i2, um, and I've shown you that. What, what else do you guys want to see? Darcy, thank you so much. No, first off, thank you for these uh, series. It's always tough to try to get on, but uh, certainly valuable. We. We have the Omni DTF. Now, as a rule of thumb, should we use the super nozzle cleaner to wet cap after a heavy printing day once a week? Like what's the best practice for using just to try to stay ahead? Like I'd rather stay ahead of it than go, oh, we've got club nozzles. Now we got to super clean it and we got to let it soak overnight and such. So can we, what would you suggest there? So I'm gonna suggest the regular super cleaner. Um, did, were you able to join us, uh, what, was it last week or the week before Mauricio where we did the, uh, the instructions for flushing the uh, capping stations? Yeah, I, did. I missed that one, but I will, okay. I've got it saved to go back and watch it. That one will go up onto YouTube in a, in a week or two, in, a, in about a week, uh, I'm being told. Um, but that's gonna be a really important one for you. That'll help you out a lot. Um, and just wet cap with that regular super cleaner. If you're using super nozzle cleaner every time or even frequently, um, you're not gonna see much of a difference performance wise um, because you're not solving, a, you're, you're preemptively solving the problem, sure. Um, but there may not have been a problem to solve in the first place. And that concentrated cleaning solution is much more expensive, as I'm sure you know. Um, so, uh, you know, on one hand, as a cost saving measure, on the other hand, uh, using the super nozzle cleaner too much 
does run the risk of a problem with the print heads called delamination. Um, so it can, over time, using too concentrated of a cleaning solution, can end up damaging the head. Okay, that's good to know. It's, we are chasing a little bit of a situation where our, our second cyan has been giving us a bit of problems. We've got a new damper coming, okay. but it, it's maybe at about 70 to 80%. And so it, we've okay. been trying to get it better. We just haven't been, we've been working with support on it and stuff. So okay. I was just trying to, cause we're about six months in on our machine and was just mm -hmm. trying to say, you know, is there any kind of best practices to stay ahead of things? Like, yeah, we do our regular wet capping and clean that head as meticulously as we can and such, but just want to avoid any possibilities of having to replace print heads as, as much as possible. Yep. Well, to set the right expectations over time with any of these kinds of equipment, you will eventually need to replace the print heads, but uh, I'm definitely with you on uh, trying to conform to all the best practices so that those print heads last as long as possible. Um, you no, know, exactly. You just want to get the life expectancy out of them in, instead of it shortening it by six months. So, no, I appreciate precisely. it. Thank you very much. Yeah, so keep up with the maintenance, print regularly, wet cap, and you should be, you should be good. Perfect. Thank you. Of course. Yvonne, I think, has a question now. Hey, Brian, something that we suggest very much is to have one of those maintenance kits you guys sell. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that you have dampeners on hand all the time and all the other stuff that comes with it. And it's yeah. truly worth it. Yeah, so we do carry, it's called the DTF support kit. We don't have it up on the website yet. We're still working on like the graphics and the photos for the parts. But we do offer that. So if you want to email me later on, Darcy, uh, I can get you set up with that. I forget what the price is off the top of my head. Um, I want to say, you remember what it was? The, for the DTF? I'll have to double check on the DTF one. Um, but yeah, so shoot me an email. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I didn't realize there was such a thing. It's a preventative maintenance kit. So it has the consumable parts that you'll need to, to have after about a six months to a year of use is the expectation is that most of these parts will be uh, needed in that time frame. Depending on usage, it can be longer, uh, it can be shorter, but having those parts on hand is more valuable for you because you have less downtime. And when we bundle the, the parts together, uh, you also will save on shipping and we add a discount on top of it, which is one of the only uh, times where we can discount parts is within those bundles. So best value for you is within those kits. I know for some folks, they prefer to just get it as needed and that's totally fine. I digress. We're working on the I2 one too. Um, not quite there yet. I don't mean to monopolize. I'll wait if there's another question. I do have another one for you. Go ahead. I don't see any other hands raised right now. Um, we're, cause we're in Canada in Western Canada, above Montana, and mm -hmm. we were having some fun, I'll say with the hot peel rolls where the glue was sticking to the transfer paper that we couldn't an shake. To show us? Um, I could go back and get some. Yeah. I, and, okay. and I spent, you know, sent them to support and stuff, but then we've kind of had better luck with the cold peel and not having that issue. So I don't know if, is there any history to say, yeah, that the hot peel rolls are maybe a little more sensitive to humidity or that, because I support was saying that they were like suggested that we should go to the cold peel and uh, it's a little slower process for application than the hot peel, but we've solved that kind of, I guess, challenge that we've had with just not being able to clean up around, clean all the glue up, even though we've been shaking it pretty good. Yeah, to, to help you out with the cold peel being a little bit more efficient, if that's what's working for you right now, um, I would say that uh, after you heat press it onto the garment, uh, right when it comes up, when, when the heat press pops up, you're gonna wipe it down with a cool cloth, damp cloth, and that'll help cool down the shirt uh, substantially where it'll take much less time for you to need to peel it. 
Perfect. Thanks, Brian. Of course. That was a good question. Um, let's see. I'm going to call on someone who is in the attendees list that I'd like to hear from. Let's see. Let's hear from. Uh, there's two Marietta. Uh, Marietta Fons Fonseca. There's two of those uh, names in the attendees list. So one of you guys, um, if you want to accept the uh, invite to become a panelist, I want to hear what you guys are working on right now and what what brought you into our session today. Going once, going twice. Oh, we lost one of the Mariettas. Oh, Marietta accepted the panelist. Thank you so much for joining us, Marietta. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're what you're working on? Hey, how's it going? This is Bernie, and uh, that's why we're using two. My wife is on the other one. Um, we are currently working on basically going from sublimation to DTF. Okay. So we're kind of just learning mm -hmm. and uh, getting a, a hang of everything. So we love hearing from everybody's experience and what everybody's going through, but uh, we're mainly just here to, to start learning a little bit more. Okay, well, this is an excellent place to do that. Um, so we have a lot of different uh, topics that we touch on. Uh, is this your guys' first time joining us? No, we've we've been maybe about a month or so. Okay, awesome. So you've seen the the wide variety of different equipment and topics that we touch on. Um, so I'm really happy that you're taking the time to join. Uh, I take it you haven't decided on any particular equipment yet. You're still in the learning phase? Right, yeah. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, take your time. There's a lot to learn, um, but there's also a lot that you'll learn after you commit to one particular piece of equipment. Once right. you pick one, there's all kinds of different um, specifics for that uh, that brand or that that equipment that you'll learn um on the fly it's not something that uh maybe people would talk about or that would be um something that someone can teach you'll just learn it on your own just like i'm sure when you first started with um sublimation right you didn't know anything i'm, I'm positive you did your research beforehand and learned a whole lot but once you actually got going with it it was you learned a lot more huh it definitely <laughs> with each try you learn something different so yeah so it's yeah a, a totally learning experience and that's why we wanted to jump on board and and see everybody what they're going through how they've done things successfully and and learn from that and then take the next steps excellent excellent yeah so we're super happy to have you here um Thank okay you. All right, so um, let's see. Did anyone have any other questions? Ron, you know what? I wanted to talk to you about that graphic you were having trouble with, um, since I think that's something that a lot of folks can kind of learn from as well, um, and maybe is a common thing to discuss. So um, Ron here, he emailed me the other day with a graphic that um, on the image is a kind of royal purple, and when it prints, it's more of a hot pink. Is that is that a fair assessment? So, um, so he's done a number of troubleshooting steps. Nozzle check is good. Of course, that was the first thing I asked him. How's the nozzle check? Uh, and then after that, he said it was perfect, but didn't send me a picture. I was like, okay, well, was it perfect before you printed or after you printed? Which is another important troubleshooting. Uh, tip uh, when something is not printing right even if it if you had a perfect nozzle check beforehand you want to do another nozzle check afterwards to make sure that you know if it's an ink flow problem you see, you'll see it um, so Ron had already done that uh, still didn't send me a picture of the nozzle check but I'll give him a pass this time 
I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Um, so uh, I advised you to open up the graphic in Photoshop um, because it's a PNG. The graphic is saved as uh, RGB colors. So I want you to convert it to CMYK colors and then save it as a TIFF file. Um, and you can do that in Photoshop. I'm sure you can do it in Illustrator, but uh, I'm not familiar with the process for that. So if you had any questions along the way, I wouldn't be able to help you. Um, so is it that you prefer Illustrator that you were kind of having trouble with that or just didn't have the time? Well, I didn't have the time to to really dive into it, you know, because, uh, yeah, uh, me and Photoshop, yeah, we we battle. We do. We do battle. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest with that. It is is no, primarily, you know, I use Corel Draw. I have been using it for like 14, 15 years, and that's where I roll at. And um, hmm. but when I did get it to convert the colors, uh, that, that graphic, oh, it just went. Oh, it was it was uh, it was horrible. So um, after that, because uh, you know I got really busy, and um, so I moved over and I. I changed my uh, my color density some um, to up to about ninety percent, and that did help. But it didn't it didn't didn't dial it into where I really need it to be that that deep deep purple. So uh, you know, because that was one of my questions was okay. You know, in the Direct Rift software, you know, you have uh, um, color profiles. You know, yeah. and, um, you know, I went back and I looked at everything because the original, it, it was designed and, and done in um, in sRGB. So that's right. what I set my direct ripped up for was uh, sRGB uh, GB, uh, profiles. So and then um, I, I just kind of played around. I was playing around with it. So I'm not totally happy where I'm at right now, but mm -hmm. it may be it may have to to be that but I, I really need to get it for customer satisfaction i really need to get it to that deep purple so if yeah. anybody's if anybody has any uh anything they can offer uh, hey i'm all ears yeah so you have my suggestion there ron for um changing it to the cmyk color profile see if that prints better mm -hmm. it might be that this particular color of purple falls outside of the gamut range that the colors can hit um but I don't want to just use that as a cop-out answer. Does anyone else have any tips? My free jet owners in the group, anyone have any tips for uh, troubleshooting uh, spot color matching? Another thing that you can try um, that I see that big color grid behind you, you can print something like that, pick the color that prints how you want it, and then edit the graphic. Worst case, um, you can brute force it that way. Um, but I, I do expect that just changing the color profile uh, of the graphic should make a pretty substantial difference. Um, okay, any other? Oh, I want to give it another world here, and because uh, I, you know, I got some time, so because you know, I've got the next ten days that we're going to be busy doing stuff, so I'm not yep. going to be printing that for a production yet until after we get done with uh, our fair. So I got some time to really dive into it and. Uh, and work on it yeah let me know i will do thank you for everything of course of course does anyone else have any questions i didn't want to pick on you tom but because you're here do you have any questions i because you're brand new to uh the omniprint line of products do you have any questions about the i2 that i can just take the time and tell you a little bit about maybe something that someone else has a question about that they're maybe too shy to ask. Mm. Not, not to put you too much on the spot. Okay. Only if there's something at the top of your head. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, how about in terms of, uh, like you said, I, I, you know, we just went over this earlier today. Uh, what's the, um, like, are there any limitations with how many prints can be done or uh, back to back? Or uh, is there like a cool down period or anything like that? Or can it just as, as fast as you can load it in? It can fast it as you can load it. Yeah. So that's a great question is what kind of um, productivity turnaround can you expect? So it's basically as fast as you can load the platen is as fast as you can make it print. Um, 
So as soon as a shirt comes off, you'll put a new shirt on. Or as soon as that DTF print is done, you'll put a new DTF sheet on. Um, and then you can just hit print and send it again. As long as nothing's changed with what you're printing on, so uh, if it's the same kind of shirt and you tucked it in flat, you don't need to adjust the height every time. And same thing with the DTF sheets. Um, as long as you've adjusted the height to the DTF sheets, uh, it's not going to change sheet to sheet. So you can be confident that, uh, Yvonne? We did, uh, last year for RuthCon, we did 1,200 sheet, 1,200 prints in a week on the I-2. And Tom, does it really say 81 degrees on that thermostat behind you? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of warm right now. <laughs> That's so funny. I couldn't even, on my screen, it, he's real small, so I couldn't even tell. <laughs> yeah, we, it's running a little warm in here, especially with the, with the lights we got. And he's over there in a, in an enclosed office. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a little warm over here. Yeah, I think what what is it right now, Mauricio? Like a hundred outside? It's only eighty. It's so it's hotter in his office than it is outside. No, no, it is not. I don't I don't know how accurate that thing is, but it's not that bad. <laughs> Maybe that's telling us the outside temperature. Well, that let's say be. that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 84 outside, according to Google. Um, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, so as, as fast as you can load it is as fast as you can print it. So 1,200, 1200 shirts in a week. I think that's, at least that's the record that I, I've heard of. If someone's beat that record before, speak now. And and we'll uh, we'll ship you the crown instead of Michael and Yvonne. But that, that's really impressive, by the way. That's awesome. Um, Hampton asks, do you have to play with the strength, the color strength setting? Some of my designs, the black type, uh, have bleeding, and I have to reduce the color strength. Um, so color strength is something that, depending on a, a number of factors, may need to be adjusted. Um, same thing with your white underbase. Uh, depending on how much pretreat you're using, how dry your shirts are, how dry your environment is, um, more or less pretreat will be needed, more or less ink will be needed. If you can get it in just that, I, that there's just this money environment that you can get where the white goes down and it's nice and solid and chalky looking. Have you guys gotten that before? And then the color goes down and it's nice and crisp. It's it's perfect. I don't know what the magic combination is to get it to that point. Um, but regardless, within the recommendations that we have uh, online, um, the, I mean, I think Tom is at the upper range of uh, operational guidelines temperature wise. I don't know what the humidity is in there, but I don't think we're allowed to run the printer uh, optimally in there. Um, so we, uh, lost my train of thought a little bit. What was I talking about? The environment. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, humidity is a really important factor. You want to keep it kind of mid range humidity and keep it a comfortable temperature. Um, the rule of thumb that I always teach in training is if it's comfortable for you, it should be comfortable for the printer. Um, so below boiling, above freezing is the, is the funny way to put it. Um, okay, all right, any other questions or are we gonna close it out a little bit early today? Going once, going twice. Sorry, Tom, didn't mean to call you out. <laughs> all good. We gotta all break good. in. <laughs> all right so we're gonna go ahead and close it out thank you guys so much for joining us i hope you uh learned a little bit about the capabilities on the i2 um this machine uh every time i use it 
I learned something new about it and I always want to pass along that knowledge to uh, you guys um, because you deserve all of the advantages in this crazy business uh, that you can get. Um, so, so do your tests, do your washes, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel because of these videos, if you miss one, go up onto YouTube on a maybe two week delayed basis or so, uh, depending on Mr. Mauricio's uh, capabilities for editing out the ums and ahs that I put in. Um, so <laughs> fo follow us on Facebook and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday, 2 p.m. Bye guys.